Welcome to Municipal Affairs, the show dedicated to delving deep into the matters that shape municipalities from across Canada. Now, as we bid farewell to 2023, we're taking stock of the highs and lows, the triumphs and trials that have shaped our municipalities from coast to coast to coast. Today, we are honored to be sitting down and chatting with the president of the Saskatchewan Urban Municipalities Association, Councillor Randy Golden. From navigating unprecedented circumstances in the province to celebrating noteworthy achievements, our municipalities have been on the forefront of change over the last 12 months. So stay with us as this is Municipal Affairs Year in Review. Randy, I want to thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. I want to start by looking back, and I want to look back on 2023 from a municipal standpoint to start off with. For you, as president of SUMA, how did municipalities fare in the province of Saskatchewan in 2023? Well, Chris, thank you for asking that, because it's always good um, to look back, to just see where you've been, uh, as we start looking at where do we go for 2024, um, and you know, SUMA represents um, all the villages, resort villages, towns, cities, northern municipalities, and that's about 80% of Saskatchewan's uh, population. And I have to say, this past year, um, our members have been so good at engaging with us and communicating with us and letting us know you know, what they're facing, uh, some of the best practices too, because there are good things happening. But, you know, when you when you talk about SUMA's advocacy, uh, what we've heard from our members is is uh, the key thing right now, our, our uh, cornerstone was mental health and addiction. So when we talk about, you know, what some of our successes, what might be, uh, we can talk about some of those things, but homelessness, um, and those things, when we talk about uh, to, with our other provincial and territorial organizations, those are the things that are key across Canada. But as you know, um, you know, the other things, the barriers around infrastructure, um, our municipalities, and I'm not saying anything that hasn't already been talked about by many leaders on, on, your, uh, on your show, is uh, we own at least 60% of the infrastructure in this province, uh, I mean, sorry, in this country. Um, and, and we feel that that's, that is a, a real challenge to us. And we wanna work with our other partners, federal and provincial governments. But, you know, we've got some barriers around that infrastructure. And then uh, not unlike what you've heard um, from all other orders of government, um, our municipalities are looking for that rebate we were promised on the carbon tax uh, because our municipalities, when we're uh, running all our facilities, our recreation facilities, uh, we're seeing a greater um, increase in that. And uh, it was our understanding that um, as we do personally here in our province, we would be seeing some rebates back on that. So you've laid out a lot that has looked back oh, yeah. on for 2023, but I want to start with the first thing you talked about because I did a deep dive and I went back into my very first interview with a municipal leader of 2023, and that happened to be you. So yes. I went back and I listened to that interview yeah. and I, I you, you were talking about the mental health and addictions and homelessness that was facing uh, municipalities. Can you give me some sort of what has happened in 2023 from a municipal standpoint on this file? Because it's still a challenge, but it, has there been steps towards sort of working with the provincial governments in 2023 to address this issue and sort of hopefully alleviate some of the pressures that municipalities are facing? So we had that first interview, Chris, and then then you joined us in April <laughs> in Saskatoon <laughs> at our convention, and you heard firsthand from our members. And it didn't matter if they were the large communities, the small communities, if they were north, south, east, west, there are concerns right, right across our province. And uh, I think also our uh, provincial leaders heard that too. Sometimes we feel they, they weren't listening. And we met with, you know, the ministers of health and rural health and addictions. And we met with the social services minister and we met with the premier and every time we talked to any minister even if it was highways we brought to uh, that table about our concerns with mental health and addictions so I guess I was encouraged 
let me say I was really encouraged uh, when I attended the throne speech um, and I heard uh, the words that came um, through our lieutenant governor from our premier and I heard him make some good commitments um, over the next year, over the next five years. So when he announced that there would be 500 new addiction uh, treatment spaces uh, over the next five years, yes, I was encouraged because we were asking for those types of things. There would be uh, 200 of those treatment beds by the end of fiscal. So that means by the end of March, 2024. Um, and some of those beds would be in the Regina, and Saskatoon, Prince Albert and Moose Jaws, understandably, our largest cities. But there would be some throughout the province that we're going to be and then some here um, in, in my city. So we're excited about that because someone someplace was listening. So um, and then, Chris, I'm going to say this because it's something that I hold near and dear to my heart. Um, but we were also pleased to hear because this. This also fits into the, the mental health was uh, the, uh, the expanded support for the second stage housing uh, to protect those uh, suffering from interpersonal violence. Um, and, you know, some of the, you know, previously announced uh, needs for emergency shelters across the province. So very much buoyed by what we were hearing around that. So in our mind, that was, a really good step. Um, you talk about the successful SUMA convention that was happening in Saskatoon in April. Um, out of that, one of the biggest news that from from an outsider's perspective was the announcement of the uh, partnership with the Polytechnic for a municipal administration program to get more people involved. And SUMA has pledged, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong here, a quarter of a million dollars towards this program to get Get more people involved in municipal administration. Why is that important to not only municipalities, but to SUMA? Uh, we're hearing that again from all our members uh, across this province, that it is becoming more difficult um, to, to bring administrators, uh, trained administrators to their communities and have them stay. Um, what we do in uh, municipal administration, whether it's assessment, whether it's mill rates, tax notices, uh, clean water, everything we do, you have to have trained professionals for that. And we know that there has been, um, as labor shortages go across the country, there has been a real need. As generation now is retiring, we're not seeing the the um, you know the the coming to this profession. Uh, from some of our young people. So this will be a certification program working with a Sask Polytechnic. Uh, around that too, we also announced the Laurent Mougeau Scholarship Fund uh, that is going to be uh, awarded to worthy um, students in this program. And we are so pleased. It is almost, since announced in April, almost fully funded so we can start um, so we can start, uh, you know, providing that support to some students. Uh, and this has happened very quickly. And it's happened for two things. The leader that we had with our CEO, uh, Laurent Mougeot, and just um, the importance that our communities of municipalities put towards this. So some really good things that came out of that. Um, looking back on that convention, there was a lot of resolutions that were passed. Some of them, the government sort of jumped on quickly, which one of them was the resorts, villages and the golf courts, on, golf carts on municipal roads. Uh, do you have an update on some of those other uh, resolutions that were passed or are you still working with the provincial government to address some of the issues that came out? And I say issues more as resolutions that came out of that convention. Yeah, and you know, no doubt we're still working on many of them. Um, and uh, we put them into the process for all our advocacy that we're doing. Uh, but the golf carts was interesting uh, because it's permissive legislation. And of course um, it was followed, it has to be regulations put uh, put into force by Saskatchewan government insurance, right? So that all the, the legal uh, you know, work is done. So, you know, the speed limits, all the other things, uh, the staying off roads. And, you know, that was a real success. 
to some of our uh, communities. Uh, will Yorkton look at something like that? Probably not. Uh, because like we've got many major highways that come through our city and I don't, I don't, I've never heard that as a need coming out of our city, but some of ours, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a need for the residents of those communities to be able to get around. So we were really pleased. So, you know, the resolution process will open up soon for 2024. And I always look forward to that. And one of the things that I enjoyed as, as SUMA president, I was able to attend the Alberta municipal municipalities uh, conference and uh, rural uh, municipalities of Alberta conference and see their resolution process and see what they're they have coming to the table and in most parts it's the same kind of things um I, I, while the beginning of 2023 was quite busy with the convention with uh yeah. sort of some of the things that were going on in the provincial legislature the second half wasn't as uh, was as busy or busier yeah. than twenty uh, yeah. the beginning of twenty twenty three for you, um, and I wanted to talk about one particular thing, and that is the regional meetings that Suma just successfully uh, completed. Uh, I believe at the end of fall, beginning just uh, beginning yeah. of November, for you as president, was were these regional meetings successful to hear sort of what the regional issues were, and what did you take away from your administration? Because I'm assuming you weren't able to get to every single one of them, but what were you hearing from your administration and from the mayors and councillors from across Saskatchewan at those regional meetings? Well, Chris, uh, I did attend every single one. <laughs> there I you go. 3,200 <laughs> kilometers in, I think, 10 days. So here's my schedule. I started out in Warman. Uh, later that day, drove to Kindersley from Kindersley back to Yorkton, which is five and a half hours. Did Yorkton. Uh, then uh, next morning, I was in uh, Canistino, beautiful community, uh, took a day or two off for the weekend, watched a little football. Then I, I started out in Lumsden, went to Assiniboia, and then finished up in Pat, uh, Mayor Pat Jackson's community of Kipling. And oh my, it is just amazing. It is so interesting. I wish I could take everybody with me. First of all, you go into the communities and you see the pride in the communities. And I try to get there a bit sooner so I can drive around and get a feel. And, and you see the pride in the community, the work that's been done. And, oh, sure, there's always some challenges, you know. But And then to meet all the leaders and to meet the administration and to have these good chats. And uh, we start our meetings all the time with something I started in Yorkton many, many years ago. And we call that... Um, our our, uh, our hometown proud. So the mayor or whoever's representing the community, instead of just standing up and doing the introductions, they stand up, introduce who's with them, and they talk about two or three things that brings pride to them, that they're proud of in their community. And, you know, I can name a few things. Like one of the first things that most have said is the people that are in their communities, um, the volunteers that they have, um, and, and that says many things to me that there's still that pride, but it also says there's still engagement. So our municipal leaders know what's going on in their community. So when we say publicly, we're closest to the people, oh man, we're closest to the people. So when you have 50 communities at a regional meeting talking about what they're proud of, you get that engagement right down to you know, whoever is there that's hosting uh, the Santa Parade or who's hosting, uh, you know, some communities have a help paint businesses downtown uh, volunteer group. You're hearing right from those people. So when I go to meet uh, with ministers, I can say I've heard, you know, from the town of, Kin uh, you know, um, uh, uh, Canistino, and this is what I've heard from them. And it's not just the municipal leaders I've heard from, because through them, I've heard from everybody that lives there. So I had an absolutely engaging time, and I wouldn't change it for the world. This is my second uh, regional tour, and uh, I, I'm just amazed each and every time I leave a community. It's just like, oh, my gosh, I'm almost happy for the drive because I need to let it, let it sink in. Um, I, I, 
while I, I we I understand that we it, we want to just trying to stay positive, I need to ask you about an issue that is important to a lot of municipalities yeah. across your province, and it's one that you've already mentioned. So we're going to dive into it a little bit here, if that's okay. Yeah. 2023 saw municipalities across Canada and even in Saskatchewan call for a new fiscal framework from the province and the federal government. This is around the lack of infrastructure funding for municipalities. You said it and I've said it, many people have said it on my show, municipalities control 60% of infrastructure in this country. That means sewage, wastewater, roads, pipes under the ground. Um, Recreation facilities recreation facilities um are municipalities struggling when it comes to finding new sources of revenue to sort of address these infrastructure deficits they are seeing when it comes to growing and maintaining their communities in the province well municipalities do not have very many sources of revenue no matter how and where you look you've got your property tax you've got fees and charges and you have uh, you know, grants and revenue sharing that you may see come in. But I mean, other than that, that is really difficult to operate on. And I go back, like in Saskatchewan, we became, you know, a province in 1905. Uh, we had communities then, and I go back to the property tax system. It was not based for what we're getting now, really and truly. Um, I talk about my own community. We're doing a major arterial road up upgrade, which is absolutely needed. It's a truck route. It's also provincial highway. It is budgeted to cost us $27 million. Provincial government has given us four, and that's it. We've got 4 million out of 27 million that our taxpayers have to come up with. And so what that does, when we're funding that, it limits everything else that we can do. And so when we look at, you know, our, our, uh, ICIP grants that we get and the new generation we're, we're going to be looking at because uh, even though this one runs for another couple of years, it's fully allocated. So when we're having these discussions, we're asking, you know, the, uh, the federal government, because there's also another pressure on those grants, Chris, and it's around where we are with inflation and cost overruns. Um, so, and I've used this and you've talked with him, uh, Mayor uh, Mike Strachan from Torquay, approved for their their uh, potable water facility for you know uh, 1.86 million. This is a community of 250 people. By the time it was finished, it was 2.2 million. A um, hundred thousand of that was unbudgeted for because at the time they put this in, there was an exemption on the cost of labor uh, for uh, for the PST that we have to pay here in our province. Uh, soon our government took that away. They took that exemption away. So now we have to pay PST on labor for any construction projects. And what we're seeing is that at least, um, you know, $35,000 uh, on every million dollars that we spend is now going to be, we have to also add PST to. We pay PST on goods and services but we now have to pay it on labor. So when our provincial government says that their PST revenues are up, I think I can outline why, um, you know, but then again, in Saskatchewan, we have a municipal revenue sharing that's unique. We get 0.75% uh, of a point of PST. So just met with our, our government uh, relations minister, Minister Don McMorris, a, a good friend to municipalities. Uh, and, you know, he explained, well, PST revenue is going up. We share that with you and we understand that. But when our city has to pay that uh, large amount, that large amount is shared with everybody. It goes out to the whole province and that's the way the system is. But we have to pay that and we don't get that back. In fact, I think it's about 29% um, of what we get in revenue sharing for the city of Yorkton we pay back in the, the PST. So, you know, when you do all these numbers and you lay them all out on a spreadsheet as our finance person does, it's not adding up, Chris. It's just not adding up to what we need. And then you take a look at what the what we've been doing with the Federation of Can uh, Canadian Municipalities, and we're gonna be ramping that up. 
to really take a look at what we need in municipalities and how do we share that? We're not asking for everything. We're saying we want to share, but we want to share it uh, much better than it is right now. I'm going to ask a very political question right now, and I apologize yes. to put you on the spot here, but yes. um, I asked Scott Pierce this exact question, the president of the FCM, um, Premier Scott Moe, uh, and uh, along with some of his other first ministers said that the pro the federal government needs to stay away from working with municipalities and deal with the provinces instead. Um are you caught between two arguing adults right now where the provinces and the federal government just don't seem to want to work together and the municipalities are stuck holding the bag, trying to figure out how to grow their communities to build housing that is required for the growing population to build this infrastructure to service their communities? How do municipalities navigate this in 2024 when they have two sort of polar opposite governments at the federal and provincial levels? Well, Chris, uh, number one, um, whomever has the money can also <laughs> make, <laughs> whoever signs the check can, uh, you know, decide where it needs to go. But uh, yes, we're caught in the middle. Um, but I think what that means is we have to work harder uh, at bringing some collaboration. And we talked about that with Minister McMorris. Um, and when we met with Minister McMorris, we met as a partnership of SUMA and our sister organization, the Saskatchewan Association of uh, uh, Rural Municipalities, um, because we have the same concerns, the same barriers. Uh, we may you know, have to do different things with it, but we, we still need to have, have funding partners. Um, and uh, we talked with the minister and we said, uh, you know, we need, to, we need to have discussions. We need to be more collaborative on this. Um, and we've asked if we could uh, sit down with uh, his ministry and work with him and then perhaps bring in all the other ministries in the province that we have, you know, one point of, of uh, contact uh, with municipalities. So when they need some assistance and some consultation um, on a new act, a new whatever, or even this discussion around, you know, having a funding partner with the federal government, uh, we need to sit down and talk to them. And they can't ask us our opinions and what do your members think and give us, uh, you know, three days. Uh, we have 400 and some members to chat with. Um, and so we would like to have an MOU on a consultation process. And I think it's not just the MOU, it's the it's the sitting down and having discussions um, and, and taking those discussions to other, other levels too. Um, it's, we don't wanna just ask all the time, Chris. That's not what we're there for. We're, we're there to say, how can we work together? Uh, because whether you're um, the town, you know, the village of Torquay with 250 people or the city of Saskatoon, the largest in our province, um, we don't do this alone. It's like any other partnership that you would have. You're in there, first of all, to work with everyone else, but secondly, for the long run. And, you know, sometimes, and I'm not saying anybody does this, but sometimes on an election cycle, we can forget about long term, you know, and, and when I sit at, as we're doing now, a budget table for the city of Yorkton, we're not making decisions for the end of now, December 31st, 2024, we're looking at projecting, you know, 20 to 30 to 40 years later. You know, how is this going to affect our our infrastructure, our budgeting, our life cycles, all those things? So those are the conversations we need to continue to have, starting with Minister McMorris and hopefully, um, you know, in, in the new year, sitting down again with uh, with our premier. So let's talk about the new year. 2024 is right around the corner. And 2024, you think 2023 was busy for municipalities. Yeah. 2024 yeah. is going to be even more busier for municipalities. Because not only are municipalities across the province heading to an election, the province yeah. is also heading to an election. Yes. So you have to advocate against what's going on provincially, but all at yeah. the same time <laughs> working on what's going on municipally. It, you have a big job ahead of you in 2024. Is SUMA up for it? Are you up for it? Well, first of all, I, please add to it that uh, SUMA is also going through a um, board and uh, association governance review. And that's some of the things we talked about at our regional meetings and sector meetings and all those things. So coming to the table 
in uh, April at our convention is going to be uh, what we've heard from around the province. This has been a two-year process uh, and recommendations moving forward. So that convention will set how we're going to work as an association, what our board looks like, what our bylaws look like. So that's coming to the convention. Um, and then uh, it'll take effect uh, when after the uh, municipal election, uh, when we get uh, then, then our new format, whatever it looks like, because there's a couple choices um, to move forward as, as SUMA. So there's that too. But absolutely, we're up to it. I've had many conversations uh, with our executive committee. We're meeting as a board uh, later this week uh, to have those discussions. This is a very, you know, it, it's it's exciting to look at because we can help we can help form what our province and our municipalities look like. And you know, so we're gearing up. We're gearing up for our advocacy for the uh, provincial election. And as you know, they stole our, and I can say that they took our date in October. So in the middle of November, and I'm crossing my fingers that the weather will be like this year, we will have a municipal election. And, you know, who knows, Chris, you know, you've got rumors all the time that there could be a federal election, in, you know, but uh, so we have to always watch for that. So we're working with our membership to understand where we need to go to advocate. Let's see some of our needs uh, reflected in the uh, platforms of the parties here in, in Saskatchewan, uh, because we also meet with the opposition party. We meet with them regularly too and have those discussions. Uh, Cause I think, you know, it's, it's not really debatable, but we know that your government is as good as your royal opposition and what they can bring to the table too. So is it exciting? Yes. Uh, will we be busy? Yes. But we have the people and the members that are ready for it. I'm going to assume that the majority of the government caucus and opposition caucus will be at SUMA's 2024 convention yes. this year, mingling yes. with all its members. Um, I want to end on one last question and then I'll let you go here, Randy, because I know you're a busy person and you are swamped with work. I want to ask, I, I understand that municipalities have a range of issues that they want to accomplish. They need to get accomplished. Looking at 2024, if you had to pick the top priority that you, as president, want to get off your bucket list for 2024, what would that be? Um, right now, it's going to be around infrastructure. Uh, because um, no matter if we're advocating for mental health, uh, a huge component of that is housing and housing in my mind falls under infrastructure. And what we're hearing now is a, a huge piece of that housing, uh, the costs are the infrastructure that goes so that how those housing, whatever it is, can be built. I mean, they need the water, the wastewater, the roads, uh, the drainage pipes, all of that. And right now, that is very, very concerning to our municipalities. We've got aging infrastructure around. So what we need to see and work towards is a really good, um, I guess, um, infrastructure program that covers and is open enough to cover all the needs of our municipalities so that there's almost like a menu. If you've done the work around your um, wastewater, but what if you need a distribution system? What if you need new drainage? All of those kind of things that that's available to you so that it's not, it's a it's a pick what your municipality needs. So that would be one of the things that you will hear me say the most. And absolutely, will housing be part of that? Yes. Will mental health and addictions? Yes, because we need a healthy population. Uh, we need to be able to, walk our streets safely. We need to know that the people that are uh, requiring extra care are getting it because that's what this, that's what this province was based on. That's what our, our, you know, our, my grandparents came to this country for. Um, and that's what I want to continue. Randy, it's always a pleasure to sit down and chat with you. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you very much, Chris, and the very best to you in the holiday season. And that's all for our year in review episode for this 2023. We'd like to extend our heartfelt gratitude for all of those who have tuned in and watched. Your support means the world to us. 
Remember, our mission is to bring you the most important municipal stories from across Canada and around the world. And we can't do that without you. So please keep those stories coming. Share your municipal news, your concerns, and even your municipal triumphs with us. Your engagement is what fuels our passion for shedding light on the issues that truly matter in our communities. And your voices are essential to that mission. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, just keep talking. 